Good afternoon. Thanks for coming. I'd like to present some of the work we're doing at Intel that's been led by Nivedita Sundaram, Jiang Hui Li, and uh, Shivani Sar. Some of the work we're doing for Xeon and, uh, and other accelerators I'll mention towards the end of the presentation. So first I want to share some of the software optimization that we're doing to get good performance out of our Xeon platforms, uh, motivate some of the instructions that we're adding by discussing some of the benefits of lower numerical precision, and then uh, talk about a modular architecture that we're contributing as, as part of an OCP platform, and share some of the other work that we are doing. But first let me motivate this software optimization by just showing you some results. So this is some of the benefits that, that we are observing on uh, the Tioga Pass, which is an, an OCP platform with a dual socket Xeon. I'm just showing results on one socket using a classification model known as ResNet 50 um, with and without the use of the Intel MKL DNN library. So you can see the gains range from uh, 5.4 when you're doing just but says one, which is harder to uh, distribute across the 18 cores of our socket, uh, all the way up to 15.6 uh, you know, when you are doing lower precision, just eight bits of precision rather than 32 bits, uh, with a larger bat size of 32, which is easier to, to distribute across uh, our 18 cores, the 18 cores in this socket. So how do we do this? First, let me tell you a little bit about uh, how deep learning uh, inference and training works. So I'll just spend a minute. Uh, when you're doing inference, uh, you take a set of inputs on, on training, and you pass them through a computational graph or a deep learning model, and then you get your output. The deep learning model is composed of all these nodes, which are called primitives or kernels or operations, you can see some of the popular ones here, like convolution, matrix multiplication, ReLU, pooling, et cetera. So what we do at, at Intel is we have a team that focuses on optimizing all these uh, graph nodes individually. Uh, and another team that works at the framework level, deep learning libraries or frameworks that focuses on optimizing the graph. So let me just start at the, at the uh, node level or kernel. For the kernels that are computationally intensive, we take advantage of some of the features that the CPU offers. So for example, one of them is a single instruction multiple data. We observe in, in deep learning models that the output feature maps can be computed uh, independently of each other. So we can put multiple output feature maps into one AVX512 register and do a, do a computation on all of them uh, in parallel because there is no dependencies between one and another one. But to do this, we have to do data reorder. So we take the, the, the data in the format that the frameworks have, and they usually have a format where, the, where it's arranged by batch size n, the number of channels, you can think of an, uh, of an RGB image with three channels, a uh, height and width, and we take this data format and we rearrange it such that the data is read in blocks of 16 channels continuously. So 16 uh, channel values continuously. The reason we choose 16 is because uh, our registers can, ha can handle 512 bits, and if you're using 32 bits in your data format, then you can put 16 different values into your 512 uh, bit registers. So that hence the reason we block in chunks of 16. Another optimization is we do register blocking. We have 32 registers in, in Skylic to, in order to hide the FMA latencies. And we also do some catch blocking in order to effectively use our caches. So these are some of the low-level details that get put into our Intel MKL DNA library or math kernel library for deep neural networks that are hidden from the deep learning scientists. 
And we take this library and we incorporate it into the deep learning frameworks like PyTorch or TensorFlow or MXNet. So the framework users can access these optimizations. In addition to these node level optimizations, we also do some graph level optimizations. So for example, uh, in the original code, you might have these three operations, convolution, realm, and batch normalization. And if you're not familiar with exactly what they are, that, that's okay, it's, I just want to explain high level view of the optimizations we do at the graph level. So a naive integration would be to reorder the data, how I explained in the previous slide, then do the convolution and then reorder back into the data format of the framework. Uh, a better approach is just to reorder once, then do as many operations as you can in the MKL DNN format, and then at the end, reorder back into the, to the frameworks format. Uh, or an even better approach is to do some layer fusion. There are some layers, specifically when you have a compute intense layer, like convolution, followed by one that is more memory bandwidth intensive and, and very, uh, and, and not compute, like ReLU. You can fuse them together, so as you're doing the convolution operation, and you have all the data in the registers and you're doing the last cycle of FMA computation that's gonna be put in the output. You apply, while it's still in the register, you apply the ReLU operation. So essentially you fuse those two together. And when you're doing inference, uh, you, you can actually do the batch normalization as part of the convolution. So we do these graph level optimizations in the frameworks. And now I want to motivate a little bit the, the reason for lower precision. When you're doing the, the inference, you're, you're doing a forward propagation. And most training and inference happens today with 32 bits of precision. But the community is shifting inference towards eight bits of precision. We observe that for many models, for many layers, eight bits is sufficient without losing, uh, or by losing very minimal accuracy in your, uh, in your results. When you're doing training though, you take the output of the inference and you compare it to the truth. And you know the truth because uh, uh, a human labeled the truth or somehow you have, you have access to what should have been the correct output. Um, and then you back propagate this error in order to know how to compute, how to change the weights of the model to get better uh, uh, to, to improve your inference. And you cycle this uh, hundreds or thousands or millions of times. Now these changes in the weights are often very small or often very large. So you need a numerical format that's able to uh, support small and large uh, num numbers. So uh, eight bits, it's not sufficient precision to represent these changes in weights, except for some few models in, in the academic community. In production, it's not sufficient given the current models and current training techniques. So the community is moving into 16 bits. Um, now at Intel, uh, we are adopting the BFLOT16 numerical format that was originally proposed and used by Google, which is uh, essentially the same as FP32, IEEE FP32, except you cut off the last 16 bits of the Mantisa but you, you end up with the same exact dynamic range as FP32. And the reason you can get, get away with this is for training, uh, deep learning models are often very robust to noise. And you can think of this quantization as a form of noise that you're introducing. And in our observation, we get virtually the same accuracy as FP32 without having to change any of the parameters of the model or any of the training parameters. Whereas with uh, IEEE FP32 or with Intate, there are some tweaks that you have to do to get these numerical formats to give you the same performance as, as FP32. And, and Intate is, as I mentioned, mostly used for, for inference. Uh, I won't talk too much into this just for, for uh, time's sake, but when you're doing Intate uh, inference, you first take your model, you have to quantize it. And there is a, a active research in the best ways to quantize the model, and not just this, but also active research in how do you determine which models to, to, which layers to quantize and which layers not to quantize 
in order to avoid sacrificing accuracy. Let me talk about the hardware advancement that we're doing. So with our current generation Skylake of, of Xeon, uh, which we call Skylake, uh, we have, we added AVX 512, we doubled the number of registers, we doubled the size of the registers. Um, the one fact that I wanna point you is we have a, a, a few instructions you can use in order to improve the performance of int 8 uh, slightly by 1.33, so 33% more performance when you're doing int 8 over FP32. So we have these three instructions, uh, these three AVX 512 instructions, um, where you take two 8-bit values and you eventually accumulate to int 32. Um, so you are getting four times more the throughput because you have 8 bits instead of 32 bits, but you're paying three times the price because you're doing three instructions instead of one. So your overall gain is four over three. With the next generation of Intel Xeon call, called Cascade Lake, which will be uh, launching in the very near future, we are adding a new AVX512 instruction known as VNNI, the Vector, Vector Neural Network Instruction, which essentially allows you to do 8-bit FMAs accumulated to in 32 with in just one with one instruction. So you get four times more the FMAs throughput over FP32. And in the next generation, the following generation, known as Cooper Lake, will be adding another instruction that will double the performance, the FMA performance of BFLOT16 over FP32. And the details of the instructions will be coming soon. Um, but focusing now on Cascade Lake uh, and, and VNNI, we get four times more the peak throughput over FP32, uh, theoretically. Now, here are some numbers uh, of the actual gains that we have observed. So for some layers, for some models, I'm sorry, we are close to the peak uh, performance. So you can see 3.9 for some ResNet 50 models. For other ones, uh, we are achieving uh, around two times the, the gains. Um, nevertheless, from our observations across a number of models that we've optimized, we're seeing two times the gains and between two and, and almost four times the gains by using this VNNI instruction. So I, I invite you in your platforms when you are running deep learning models to take advantage of the int 8 optimizations and also the FP32 optimization that, that Intel's been doing. Uh, you can replicate the results later with these configurations which this slides will be, will be posted. Um, I want to share a quick uh, demo um, to show you some of the performance improvements that we've observed uh, over the past year and a half. Uh, when about a year and a half, it was hard to get really good performance out of, uh, out of the CPUs. And the main reason was the lack of software optimizations. But over the past uh, two years, we've worked very hard to mature the optimization to give the, our end customers um, high performance out of their CPUs. So on, on the left side, you're gonna see the frame rate on Resident 50 before Intel did any optimizations. And on the, right hand, on the right side, you're gonna see the performance of the optimizations we've done up to the time we launched Skylake in July 2017. And you can see that the gains from an optimized score to the optimized code are around 50 times for this particular model. This is running on, on a cafe. Then here you can see uh, on the left is the performance when we launched Cascade Lake all the way to the performance Cascade Lake today. Actually, what was that? Sky. Did I say Sky Lake? 
Oh, okay, my bad, thank you, pretty correct. So on the left is the performance Scalic when we launch, and on the right is the performance Scalic today, or, or in, in December, it's a little bit better today. And you can see that you get an additional 5.7x times the 50, so almost 300x. And then in the last set, you're gonna see a performance Scalic with Intate compared to the performance Cascade Lake with, with Intate, which gives you an additional two times gain. So overall performance would be somewhere around a 550x, and mostly from, from software, except for this last bit, which comes from, from this new hardware instruction. Anyway, this is some work that, that I'm very proud that we've done at Intel, enabling our users to take advantage of, of CPUs for deep learning workloads. Now I want to mention uh, uh, this new uh, scalable modular design that, that we're working on. Uh, we want end users to be able to use uh, Xeons for all their workloads, for uh, general compute, for inference, for training. And so we have this, this design, it's a glueless scalable two socket design, which you can use as two socket or as a four socket or as an eight socket connected via uh, UPI, and you can connect them in, a, a, with, in the fourth socket via fully connected mesh topology, or in eight socket as a, a pinwheel topology. And you can, use, you can use this for a number of workloads, for uh, in-memory databases, uh, to use them as cloud-based infrastructure as a service, et cetera. They ha you can access the very large memory of the CPU, which is essential for a number of uh, e key deep learning workloads that some of uh, large customers uh, need for their applications. Um, and if you can run multiple diverse workloads on one platform, it can uh, potentially lower your, your TCO. So the the configuration of the OCP platform we're working with, closely with Facebook, is called the Large Memory Unified Training OCP platform, an eight socket zero architecture uh, connected in, a, a <clears throat> in, in an eight pin wheel or a twisted hypercube or with the ability to attach an accelerator at each socket if, if needed. So what's, what, are we, what else are we working on? So later this year, we're gonna be re releasing uh, two accelerators, one for training, one for inference. The training accelerator is called the Intel Nirvana Neural Network Processor for Learning, or a shorter name, SpringCrest, uh, which will be compliant with the OCP uh, accel accelerator module. And you can hear more about the, the OCP accelerator, OCP accelerator module in the talk following mine uh, from Whitney and, 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 and some of her collaborators. Um, so the NNPL is gonna provide large high bandwidth memory with a sufficient local SRAM in order for, for, uh, to process large models as well as interconnects between multiple spring crests within one node and across multiple nodes. The NNPI inference accelerator that we're developing, uh, it's, we've been developing in close collaboration with, with Facebook. Uh, other work that we're doing is we're contributing to the deep learning frameworks and also an important graph compiler project known as GLO. Uh, so we are a close partner of this community, the GLO community. And uh, finally, as I mentioned, we are adding BFLOR 16 format, not just to Cooper Lake, but also to other products, including NNPL and FPGAs. And as I mentioned, we've tested across a number of workloads, including work like Rester 50, Deep Speech 2, uh, Google GNMT, uh, DC GANs, et cetera, and, and we observe the same performance as, as FP32. I'd like to invite you to contribute to the uh, OCP8 socket uh, reference platform. 
and also to use the deep learning frameworks with intel optimizations and you can get more information in, in this article uh, thank you and i'd love to take some of your questions Have you heard, uh, this is Philip Corney with Penguin Computing. I recently read uh, a paper on an alternate floating point format that has a scalable exponent and scalable mantises. Are you aware of that work? Yes, you, yes, that so there was, there was a, a, a paper at, at NIPS by, by a Facebook engineer, um, and we have some research going on in that area. Uh, it's still an, an area of research, looks, looks promising, and we'll, we need to do further experiments before committing that format to, a, to one of our products. Mm -hmm. well, if there are no questions, I'm between this and, and the next session, over the next uh, five minutes, I'll, I'll, I'll be here. I'd love to answer some of your questions one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, thank you very much.